Welcome back to Spiral Spy Tutorials with Tovok. This is the advanced tutorial. Um, and today I'm going to show you to do quite a bevy of things. This will most likely be my last tutorial. If you've noted, I have stated that this would be a four to five episode tutorial that depends on the length of this video. And um, I've kind of decided to consolidate the last three episodes into this. So if this isn't too long, it'll all be one episode. If not, I'll spread spread this out to several episodes. So um, first, I'm going to start off here by noting that um, um, you'll see our five models here. I'm going to um, tell you what we're about to embark on. So in the middle, we have our um, our hero, our default model that we can animate, we can do all kinds of fun stuff with that you might have seen like the same kind of stuff in the basic usage tutorial. I'm going to show you how to save your model and how to add items to your model. And that is Eduardo. Um, to the right of Eduardo is um, Neon Vomit. Um, with Neon Vomit I'm going to show you how you can recolor your character models. To the far right you'll see Challenger and with him I'm going to show you how to um, how I've edited textures to go on certain um, pieces of equipment. I'm going to show you how to edit textures. Um, to Now, going back to Eduardo, to the left of Eduardo, you'll see a Spook Hat, and I'm going to show you how to set monsters within your world on Spiral Spy. And to the far left, you'll see the Rugged Ranger, and I'm going to show you how to edit the monster files. <laughs> okay, so starting out with Eduardo. Now, this is going to be a little complex as far as um, teaching you guys how to save models because it's not the simplest process. So, um, with Eduardo, we're going to, he's already selected, um, he's our default model, we're going to go to edit, and we're going to pull that uh, screen up and bring it a little bit bigger so we uh, know what we're doing here. And um, we're going to go all the way down on Eduardo. Uh, you'll notice I saved him as a different version, so his uh, texture has changed a little bit. He doesn't have arms or legs, but let me let me figure out what I'm doing here real quick. Okay, so Eduardo. Um, first off, to note, it this doesn't work the same way as the basic. Um, the basic model, you'll notice my model palette has um, a different window type for colorization, helmet, and armor. And this is because the basic model has a, a, special, a special parameter that will reset the defaults every time you come back around so that you can play with what you want your knight to look like. This makes it so that every time you restart the game, there's a default grayscale model there that's just gross and you've lost everything you worked on the last time. If you want to keep your models, you have to um, go into more complex details. So you would go down to the bottom of your um, edit screen that you've pulled up with um, your Eduardo and um, you'll see that we have parameters at the very bottom, P parameters. So the first parameters you're going to mess with, the only parameters you're going to mess with is your um, colorization and you're going to change it from direct, it's going to be defaulted as direct, you're going to change it from that to choice. Then you're going to go down past face textures and height and do the same for helmet and armor, you're going to change those both to choice. Now, after that's done, you'll go back to a, uh, back up to attachments. And for the default model, the attachments are grayscaled um, pieces of equipment. But we've already changed Eduardo. So I'm just going to show you how to do that again. So now it's choice. Everything you make in this is final decisions. And they'll always be on your um, character. So you'll go up to your first attachment, zero, which is your helmet, bone helmet. You can um, play with the colors here if you really want to. And uh, you same way you would do any other uh, model, you just click on model that, and then you um, pick the item that you would like to replace your um, your helmet with. So I've given Eduardo a chromalisk helm now. So now Eduardo will always have that helmet, but not so fast because if you exit out and you click edit again, it'll return him to his prior save file. So what you want to do is you want to go up to file in the edit window and click save as. We I've already saved the file for Metal, um, Eduardo but it'll default you to certain screens. Now what regardless of whatever screen you've been defaulted to because it can vary 
um, you want to go um, start from the RS RC panel, go into characters, go into PC, and this is where the default model file is. So this is a good spot to place all your models. You'll notice my default model and I have a couple of other models that I've saved outside of my files. And you'll notice that if we come all the way down here, I actually have a um, Spiral Tutorials um, file already saved. And I've saved it as 111 so that as to um, easily find my models. So going back into 111 Spiral Tutorials. So it's, it's a good idea to make a new folder so that you can easily find your models and normally make it a 1 or an A so it's at the beginning so it's a lot easier to find now I'll go into 111 Spiral Tutorials and I will save as Model Eduardo and now um, Eduardo is saved and um, every time I exit out of this model clear it and bring back Model Eduardo he'll have the same stuff same animation that I've set him with everything so at default his an his start animation is salute that's why you see him saluting there but he's the default he's the source model that we're using here so I can send I can play with that a little bit um, I have the global speed set to 0.25 if you haven't noticed just so that the um, the walking animation because this is this is base speed for the walking animation just so you can get an idea um, it's not super fast but still. So I'm going to slow that down, back down, and I'm going to go back to my uh, model editor. Now I'm going to show you because attachments work different for um, these kind of models. Um, you can still go in just like the other model and change all the attachments here, but like I said again, when you come back to the model they'll all be gone. Same with weapon and shield. So in order to combat that, you um, you can make new attachments, or you can always go down to um, weapon and shield and change those to choice as well, and find them in the um, attachments where they are, and you can change those. So I'm just going to show you how to add new attachments, um, accessories to be specific, and some custom attachments. Now this is the um, chromalisk head. Um, I'm going to add a. What am I gonna? I'm gonna add a little scouter, one of those little Dragon Ball Z scanner scouters to his face. Um, model scanner vision presets. I'll just use the presets. You can also use recolor, which is basically the prismatic m model of the um, item. But we'll just do presets. And this is your identity color right here and then this is the preset color so I'll do like a divine and now he's got his little scouter so now he's got attachments woohoo um, as easy as that make sure um, you have a node set um, the node decides where the item is put it doesn't matter for attachments which node you pick because they'll always go to where they default as attachments but um, you still need this if you don't select anything then spiral spy will crash it matters. It's a lot more important to pick um, a different node for um, items that you're going to play with and set on your character. So I'm going to give him a blade on his hip, so that it looks like he's always to toting around his blade. So by default, I want this to be on his right hip. So I'm going to pick bone belt. Now every time he I animate, it'll be a strapped to his belt on the right side, and it'll look really nice. I'm going to give him some kind of sword. So. I'll go into the items, weapons, sword, and I'll just give him a default caliber. Now, you'll more than notice that the caliber is weird, caliwampus, too big, and sticking straight out of his thigh. So this is where you have to use your transform tools. Um, basically, you, you want to rotate it and um, you, you know you just have to play with this because it doesn't conform to the normal compass um, modes like um, model preference would so you have to um, you have to play with it see which directions it goes see how it looks it's best to have your character standing idle so that you can make sure um, it all works because if you're playing with it as he's doing a walking animation like I just was 
um, it becomes much more strenuous. So you just play with these and um, you scale it down a little bit so it doesn't look so big. You can clip it out so it's not clipping through his um, belt so bad. So I'll just clip it out a little bit. Move it up. Same way as you do preferences, you can drag it, um, the arrows with your mouse, or you can tap to nudge. Um, and now when I animate him walking, it should animate somewhat correctly with the sword on his hip. Yeah. So now Eduardo's got a little sword on his hip. And before I leave, I always want to make sure to click File Save so that Eduardo is always Eduardo. And because um, if you leave without saving and click the Edit button, it'll bring him back to the most previous version without any of the changes. Okay. Moving on, we're going to uh, get to Neon Vomit here. So Neon Vomit is preference right now. So I have to open up my preference palettes palette and she's the second environmental she's the first environmental model so I'll go to her and now I'll edit her um, so same as the other guy you have attachments animations and preferences you're just going to go um, down and I've already picked some items you'll notice um, recolor items that can be recolored without editing the check texture are called model recolor so I have her wearing the model recolor of the double plume helmet and the model recolor of the um, double belt helmet I believe that's what the, uh, double belt armor I believe that's what that is so um, every color on here is customizable you'll have to um, play with it to figure out what colors you're actually changing but you'll you um, all you have to do it'll start out as a goldish color by default I'll, I'll even I'll show you uh, let me clear the file and then I'll so this is the default of those colors you'll notice it's a lot different from what I had before um, you just go into hue and it'll change the hue so it'll change the color by itself then you can go into saturation and it'll make it whiter or um, darker or sorry it, it drains the color or adds color and then value makes it darker or lighter so you can play with those on everything and it'll change different parts of the armor set and that only works on basically any proto gear there's a couple of other items that do have options to change these settings but the um, proto gear is the base ones that are there so mainly you'll find these on any sets of proto gear and you can always do a model recolor and play with it okay now moving on I'm gonna show you um, the textures I'm gonna show you uh, model challengers um, texture palettes and how I've um, managed to edit together two different sets of armor here without them colliding so messily so um, Challenger is wearing a modified plate gown on his chest piece with some um, rivet gear as his default armor. So the modified plate gown is the um, addition to this armor. So you just go to um, you'll just go to um, your challenger file and your preferences he's my first environmental model so I'll edit that and I'll show you how to add the, the um, texture and I'll show you a little bit of what the texture um, what editing the texture might look like and what you might do so um, the armor is an attachment and this attachment was not the last one I put on actually I had set okay so <laughs> it is an attachment I replaced it with the uh, default armor as I recall oh perhaps not so the armor is an attachment we've established that I'm just confusing myself a little bit sorry um, I'm just trying to find where I put this armor so give me a moment uh, um. here we go so it's my 19th attachment this guy has a lot of attachments so it's hard to figure out um, 
what piece of equipment is what. So um, you'll notice it's just the default plate model. If I go in here, it's under plate, it's under armor and gear, but it's just the default um, plate armor set. Now what I've done is I've gone in and I've added a new option for textures. So you'll notice that I can easily change it back to any other plate armor, but it clips through all his other gear and it has all those like messy boots and extra folds and stuff that it doesn't need. So I made a new texture called Slender that matches his gear better and um, looks quite nice if you ask me. So I, um, I came out of um, the... <laughs> I, um, if you go to config and then the edit, so you're editing the plate model now, and you go down to the parameters, the first one is choice, and, um, it's the variant choice, and you'll see options down below. Now you have an option to add a new option. So you can always make a new option and input a new texture that a new custom texture that you have made. I made a uh, one texture called Armor Skin Variant Slim um, dot PNG and I named it Slender. So under the Options tab, going back, you'll see that there's Slender, and um, it's under the Plate Options model. And before you leave those, you always want to make sure you save it so that the armor set is um, concrete. <clears throat> um, now to just give you a basic look at the textures I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'll show you that um, these are what textures look like this is a default texture you go into the files you open up the dot PNGs and you bring them up in Photoshop and this is what the texture looks like so this is this is the uh, dark powder armor default which is what I edited to get my variant and um, all I've done is a simple image adjustments, hue saturation, and um, change the saturation to a more red color so that it matched. And I've you've also noticed that I've take I've taken out the um, wrist guards um, and hand hand guards um, leg plates so that they don't clip. So they're non-existent anymore and they don't clip through my gear making it look ugly so um, now everything's to my liking um, more palette stuff there's plenty of stuff you should do if you're gonna mess with textures you wanna be you wanna know what you're doing in Photoshop I'm not gonna get into Photoshop right now but I'm just showing you a taste of how I do new textures for my models and I normally make them specifically for models I don't just play around with textures okay so I'm going to X out of Photoshop now that I've shown you that. And that's all you need to know for uh, making textures. So we're moving right along. I'm going to show you how to spawn in our little spook cat friend here. So um, it's really actually quite simple. I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that you could do this. So first of all, I'm going to kill him. I'm going <laughs> to take him off the map. He is um, my third preference. And um, I'm just going to show you from the RSRC palette um, source like menu where you're going, where you need to go to spawn this little sucker. So you click on character, much like where your models are. Um, instead of PC, you'll pick NPC. And then you have a folder conveniently labeled monsters. So you'll go into monsters. And then you have a list of a bunch of monsters. Some of them don't go by their default names, but you know, just um, look around, search by yourself. Um, I'm doing Spookat, so there is a Spookat listing right there. And there's some confusing files, but normally you want to go with the model.dat. This varies with different units. And, oh, Spookat! There's a bunch of things you can get into to editing your, um, your items. Sometimes there's your monsters sometimes there's variants sometimes there's different things you can do with them so I'm just gonna leave um, this spook at pink and leave him there and um, that's how you spawn in monsters um, and oh, whoa that was weird um, editing the um, the monsters is a lot like editing your own units so my environmental model 2 
which is my rugged ranger. Um, he has been modified to be um, purple. Uh, the rock plate shield, the rock jelly shield, like over his shoulder, royal jelly shield, sorry, um, over his shoulder, and some tusks. And all you really do is, like a lot of these, you go into edit, you go down to wherever attachments may be. Well, <laughs> way at the bottom on this one. Um, and you pick, um, you add new attachments. So all I did was I added new attachments. You'll notice if I change the helmet, he loses his tusks. Because what I did was I moved a Dread Skelly helmet to his chin to give him tusks. And that is really cool, if you ask me. So it's just finding items you like and um, tweaking these items to um, get the results you want. So same thing with the Jelly Shield. You still have all the variant selectors. I just wanted a Royal Rank 2. You can have anything, really. Um, and you can also move it around, much like the other items. It's important to, again, clip these to the right spots so that they animate correctly, because if you do a strike and the shield is not attached to his shoulder or upper arm on your node listing, um, if it's attached to his jaw, it will follow his jaw's path of travel and will clip through your own items and look really, really awkward. So make sure you're getting your nodes right, and then you can play with the... Um, location of it and yeah that's it that's um, the advanced tutorial for model making on um, Spiral Spy thank you for watching and um, I hope all these tutorials have been very helpful for you that's it